So we're going to go back to the beginning and look at the structure of an atom. By the end of this video, we'll be able to answer this six mark question. Describe the structure of an atom, including properties of its subatomic particles. First thing we need to think about is what is it they are asking? What is a subatomic particle? And then what does it mean by properties? Subatomic particles, it means what is inside an atom? We know inside an atom we have protons, electrons and neutrons. These are our subatomic particles. Then we need to think about the properties. What information do we know about each particle? We know that a proton has a positive charge, a plus one. We know that an electron has a negative charge of minus one. And we also know that a neutron has a neutral charge. We say that it has a numerical value of zero. The next property we're going to look at is the mass of each particle. A proton has a mass of one, but for an electron, we say it has a very small mass. A neutron has exactly the same mass as a proton, but a mass of one. The next thing we need to look at is where are these particles in an atom? This is a simple picture of an atom. In the middle of the atom, we have a nucleus. You can see in the picture that in the nucleus, there are positive particles. These are the protons. The other particle doesn't have a charge, so we know that these must be the neutrons. Around the outside are our electrons in shells. We can see from the picture that the atom is mostly empty space, with the nucleus in the middle and the shells on the outside. We see most of the mass is in the middle. We can put all of that information into a table to make it easy for us to retrieve the information so we can eventually write our answer to the original question. You can see that a proton has a positive charge, a mass of one, and is found in the nucleus. A neutron is the neutral charge, a mass of one, and is also found in the nucleus. An electron has a negative charge, is very small, and is found in the shells. But how do we know how many protons, electrons and neutrons are actually in an atom? Let's look at sodium. You'll find all the known elements in the periodic table and each element has a nuclear symbol. So the bottom number is the atomic number. The top number is what we call the mass number. Our atomic number is the number of protons in an atom of that element. Every different element has a different number of protons. For example, sodium always has 11 protons, oxygen will always have eight protons, and carbon will always have six protons. This number can never change. The atomic number is also the number of electrons. This can actually change, but that is another topic. The overall charge on an atom is neutral because the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons. And so the positive charge cancels out the negative charge. The mass number gives us the total number of neutrons and protons. We know how many protons there are in an atom from the atomic number. So to calculate the number of neutrons, we take the atomic number away from the mass number. So for sodium, we have 11 protons, 11 electrons, 12 neutrons. We have 12 neutrons because 23 take 11 is 12. Let's get back to the original question. Describe the structure of an atom, including properties of its subatomic particles. First, let's state what the different subatomic particles are. In an atom, there are three subatomic particles. These are protons, electrons, and neutrons. Now let's talk about their properties. First, we'll look at charge. A proton has a positive charge, an electron has a negative charge, and a neutron has a neutral charge. 
Now let's look where they are actually in an atom. In the middle of the atom is a nucleus, which contains protons and neutrons. The electrons can be found in shells around the nucleus. Let's now involve masses and the size of an atom. The majority of the mass of an atom can be found in the nucleus, as both protons and neutrons have a mass of one. The electrons are very small. The nucleus is still very small compared to the overall size of an atom. What about the overall charge of an atom? In an atom, the number of protons and electrons are the same, which means the overall charge of an atom is neutral because the charges cancel each other out. In an exam, you might be asked to work out how many protons, electrons and neutrons there are for individual elements. These are the next few tasks are going to be about. For task one, you have to work out how many protons, electrons and neutrons there are for each of the following elements. You have magnesium, titanium and aluminium. If you're not sure, rewind the video and find out where we work them out. Pause the video while you have a go at this task. Task two, a sulfur atom can be represented as 32, 16 and an S. What does the number 32 represent? Pause the video while you have a go at this question. Task three, a bromine atom can be represented as 80, 35 Br. What is the total number of electrons in a bromine molecule, Br2? Again, pause the video. Task four, the nucleus of an argon atom has a charge. What is the charge? You have three options, A, negative, B, neutral, C, positive. Pause the video while you have a go at this question. Task five, why is the total positive charge in every atom of an element always the same? Final task, a helium atom has two protons, two electrons and two neutrons. Explain why there is no overall charge on a helium atom.